Well, I said it's a war. A war against slugs and snails. I don't have the heart to kill the snails. I'd carry them away and throw them out into the bushes, but the slugs I have no love for at all. Because they're the ones that I see most often. Oh, dear. If you don't want to see a slaughter, do not watch the next few minutes of this. I'm going to cut them all. And here I go. Sorry, buddy. That's one. That's two. That's three. That's four. That's five. Five dead slugs. And guess what? I'm going to flip them up on the mound because slugs eat other dead slugs. And they'll eat each other instead of eating my plants. And now reset the trap. Next. Here's another. After yesterday's dig, I have a lot of dirt here. Let's see what's under here. Oh, only one. Well, the war continues. Sorry, buddy, you're a casualty of war. Because you know what you did. Yes, you do. You know what you did. So, that's what I do to slugs. My slug traps worked so well, <clears throat> I just went to the same tree and got more bark that was laying on the ground. It's a big old dead log. The biggest one that I pointed out in one of the first few videos laying over there, that there was no way I could move. It's about eight feet around. But its bark started falling off after the flood. So I'm using that as slug traps because of all the amount of slugs that ended up underneath that last time, it just was too easy. So I'm giving them more places to hide when they decide to move out in the morning. And here, this next time I come out, after I finish the inside wall in there and the outside corner, I'm going to start slowly and carefully filling in the gaps here so that the slugs don't have a place to crawl into at night. And I know that they're in there by droves. There are droves and droves of slugs in these cracks and crannies, so I need to fill in these gaps. I don't mind if I have some wood exposed as long as there's no place for slugs to crawl in between the wood and the dirt. I'm going to pack it in tight. I'm going to take my time and do it right. So the new slug traps are waiting and ready, and next time I come out it's going to be another slaughter. Last time I was out here, I promised I would plant another 500 pumpkins, and I soaked them last night. I also have about a thousand sunflower seeds and about 50 peanuts, <clears throat> uncooked peanuts that might even grow here. Who knows? So I'm going to plant the peanuts first in random places in the front, only in the front area here, probably from the, the front sunny side. And then sunflowers everywhere around the top that I can, and pumpkins a little bit lower on the inside, hoping that they'll grow up because they're a climbing vine, so they'll like to go up the hill. And uh, when pumpkins start growing and moving around, I'll try to keep them off the inner island here, but I'll let them take over the swale. Anyway, I'm going to plant these things in my fight against slugs. If I overplant pumpkins, and if I have out of a thousand pumpkins, if I get 400 of them growing, and the, and the slugs eat, I don't know how many, let's say the slugs eat half of them, maybe I'll have 200 pumpkin plants growing and I can thin them out myself, but I think the slugs will do all the thinning I need. I just want to overplant them because I'm very disgusted that my 40 good pumpkins were all eaten. There's only one pumpkin left, and it's in a non-growing state. I found it sitting there, and I think they ate the... I think they ate off the part where it would grow up higher. It's, uh, yeah. They ate the nub off the middle here, and I don't think it'll grow anymore, so I think it's done for. So I put uh, those slug traps down. Now it's time to overplant this thing with so many pumpkin and so many sunflower seeds that there's no way that they can possibly keep up with it. Okay, so I have planted another 500 pumpkins, which means it's close to a thousand pumpkins that I've planted in the last two days, plus about a thousand sunflower seeds. I don't think they all will grow, and that's why I overplanted them. 
and I'll thin them out later if it becomes a problem. It's not a problem to cut down things. So here it is now. It's the 11th of June, 2014, and uh, things are starting to grow. There's sprouts everywhere, even on the new stuff that I just dug the other day. So it's 80, 81 degrees or 27 degrees centigrade, 81 Fahrenheit, and it's going to take off pretty soon here. Things are really trying to grow hard. It is June 15th, Sunday morning, it's just past 7 o'clock. I come out on my preliminary hunt for slugs, and I've, I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 slugs and one snail. So here we are at slug trap number one. Oh, there we go. There's one. Okay. Slug trap number two. There we go. And flip her back over. Moving on to slug trap number three. Got one of those little tiny snails as well. Where did he go? One second. There's a slug right there as well. A moment. I hate these things. Okay, flipping that one back over. Slug trap number four. Oh, there we go. See that? Slub track, <laughs> slub trap, slug track. <laughs> slug trap number five produces as well. Okay. Let's try number six. Yeah, one of these ghostly white ones. I don't like these. These are soft and squishy and icky. I don't really like them. They're nasty. <sighs> Seven. Oh, there's a tiny baby. Look at this little tiny, tiny slug. Just a tiny baby slug. So that's uh, five from just that one spot. And gently lay my bark back down. So this method is a pretty good method for the slugs that are trying to hide someplace. This one is empty. Lay it back down. And the last one, number 10. Also not a producer today, but eliminating that many slugs <clears throat> that have been causing problems with my pumpkins and other plants is a blessing. So I'm going to go chuck these in the river again. I'm going to take those, looks like miniature banana leaves. Ah, oh, slug ball. Still two in the thing. A nice big squishy slug ball sandwich. So I got every slug right there. And I'm going to take them to the river again. That's close enough. 
You can see that peanut there. I actually planted a few peanuts. And wherever you can see peanut shells, they're on top of the peanut holes. I don't know if any will grow. Here is, just in about five days' time, the difference between the horseradish from last time, those little sprouts, and now. And it's really, really doing well. I, I see the slugs also tried to eat a lot of it, but it's growing so fast the slugs can't keep up with it. Plus, I think I just threw 20 or 30 of those slugs right in the river just now, so... It's much shorter than the other one. <laughs> I should have stuck it on that side first, but I didn't. So what I've done today is I've planted probably about a thousand, and I'm not kidding again, about a thousand uh, legumes. These ones are Mediterranean lupine. They're a yellow flowered one, not a blue or purple one. On the outside, I really quickly went around the whole outside with the butcher knife, used it like a scythe, and hacked out the edge here so that uh, you can see there's a definition between where the edge of the swale is and uh, the stuff standing up. I cut that all down and threw big chunks of it here as mulch right on the mound itself. One cool thing, underneath this, I found uh, the first Topinambur, or rather Jerusalem artichoke sprout coming up. So I covered and protected it. Hopefully it will grow. I do have sprouts growing here. There it is. I do have sprouts growing on my plum tree. So I knocked some aphids and ants off of it so they can go bother some beans or something instead of my poor little plum stick. And my experiment so far is a success. We'll see if it lasts through winter or not, but it's sprouting, so if it's sprouting, it's also going to be growing roots. I'm happy. I didn't have to go through the whole air layering process of waiting three months to plant something. I just stuck a stick in the ground, and there you have it. <laughs> 